shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Health and Wealth Podcast with your hosts, Tim and Carter. What's trending in Richards? Carter Wilcoxon, founder of CSI Financial Group here with my co-host and former wealth advisor, Tim James, founder of chemicalfreebody.com and your new health advisor. This is the show where we reveal the connection between physical and financial abundance. Hey, welcome back to the Health and Wealth Podcast Show in Richards. We are super excited about our guest today. And uh, But before we get started, before we introduce her, um, and it's very, very impressive, by the way. I can't wait to actually hear her story. I'm just learning about her myself today. So in Richards, you are in for a treat on this uh, casual Friday. As, as you may notice this if you're watching it on YouTube. So um, first of all, let me just see how my co-host, uh, Mr. Chemical Free Body himself, Tim James, how are you doing out there, bud? And Tim James, I can't hear you. So hopefully, hopefully I know that we're, there, there we go. Okay, awesome. All right. I know okay, we have I, had it, of- I had it backwards. So I was going to say is I'll be turning my mute button on and off because I'm at my mom and dad's house and the contractor is putting on uh, siding right now. So you might hear some bang banging. So um, now I know when it's blue, it, you can hear me. And when it's not, <laughs> you can't. So I'm excited to be here. And I um, invited Nancy to be here because uh, uh, I was actually introduced to her through, I think it was, I don't remember a podcast booking agent or whatever. And, and I've been on her show a couple of times. She has a, uh, a radio show on iHeartRadio. Um, but we definitely want to share that she's been doing this work for over 30 years. We both had a start at the Hippocrates health Institute in West Palm beach, Florida, which is a natural detox and nutrition clinic talks about, you know, getting all the man-made chemicals out and flooding the body with, uh, you know, living foods, not just raw foods, but living foods like sprouts and sprouted nuts and seeds and beans and grains and why that's important to be implementing that into our diet today and part of our regiment because, um, you know, living foods have um, some micronutrients in there that raw foods don't. So um, I'm really excited to, to hear Nancy's story. Yeah, yeah. And I can't wait as well. And um, so, you know, in Richards, you know, a lot of times as you've been listening um, to our show, and, and by the way, if you want to learn more about the institute that Tim was just alluding to, make sure you go back to listen to podcast number one and the backstory between Tim and I, because we talk a lot about you know, his background, my background, everything. And he gets really into that. So it's a, it was a really cool story, which by the way, also led us to starting our own, po- uh, you know, podcast where we're co-hosting. So um, without further ado, Nancy Addison is in, um, I believe you're calling in or, or simulcasting in from uh, Texas, correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, I am. Well, well, yeah. well, welcome to the show. We, I'm seriously so excited about having you on today. And, uh, and, and I know our enrichers are going to get a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the health side of the equation. You know, Tim's got his Truth, Freedom and Health uh, t-shirt on today uh, for those who are just listening to the podcast. And that's really what this is about, right? It's, a, it's about predominantly, you know, your, your freedom, but we have to have truth and diversity of thought and things of that nature. But um, Nancy Addison, thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure and love, I love doing things with uh, Tim and, and I'm really excited about meeting you today. Awesome. Well, um, if you don't mind, uh, you know, kind of, you know, how we get started, the, the typical theme of the show is to, to learn a little bit about your you know, background, where you got started, you know, our enrichers love hearing, you know, backstories and, you know, who you really are, what, you know, what got you to where you're at today, basically. So if you don't mind, you know, give us a, a, a backstory, take as much time as you want. You know, there's no rush uh, on this. Everybody knows it's a long form you know, podcasts and everything. So go ahead and share with us, you know, sort of, your, you know, your start into the into the health field and, you know, where uh, you started from. Thank you. I believe it started when I was two and my pediatrician gave me an overdose of penicillin. It nearly killed me and I ended up in the hospital having multiple blood transfusions and bone marrow tests because they didn't know what was wrong with me and my pediatrician wouldn't go to the hospital. And they told my parents I was going to die. But as you can see, I made it. (laughs) And uh, but I was left with acute anemia. And 
and struggled with health and energy. And I grew up in the 60s, 50s and 60s. I'm 66 now. And there was a lot of processed foods back then. And, and it was you know white refined sugars and sodas were being introduced to the market. And uh, sugar, because I had acute anemia, I was craving anything that would give me energy. And I became a sugar addict. And by high school, I was pre-diabetic. I had macular degeneration. And the doctor told my mother that I was going to be a diabetic. And so he told me to take artificial sweeteners. And so sugar-free Dr. Pepper became my food of choice. And I was just living on those. And by my then I went to college. And I, I wasn't completely diabetic. but I was still doing artificial sweeteners. I took Cordon Bleu in London, so I was learning how to cook. And I took Chinese gastronomy and I joined a dance company. And so I was very much aware of energy and weight and uh, being you know, able to uh, maneuver through, through life. But I was hooked on sugar. And by my late 20s, I'd moved back to Texas, I'd gotten married getting pregnant and I was having serious headaches and I found out that, you know, a lot of it was the sugar and caffeine and I just went cold turkey on those and just cut myself off completely from sugar and caffeine and the headaches went away and I started putting together the fact that what we put in our body actually affects our body and, and makes the tissue, blood and cells and that, that make your body run. And so I, I had two babies back to back 13 month, months apart. And I was a very tiny person when I got pregnant, I was like 98 pounds or something. Wow. And having two babies back to back, my, my doctor had not given me any nutritional guidance. He just said, eat. And anybody who's ever been pregnant knows that you just have an unbelievable, insatiable desire to eat. And I did. And I put on a lot of weight. I was probably after my second child, I was a good 50 pounds overweight, which is pretty rough for a person that's five foot two who used to be a dancer. And at that time, my father got, he had had a, a heart attack when I was in college and he had survived that, but now he got cancer and he passed away when my son was one. And everybody had been doing, he had been doing what the doctors told him to do. Uh, my whole family was doing all the things that the doctors told him to do. They were going regularly. I was too. And everybody seemed to be dying of heart attacks or cancer in my family. And when my dad died, my personal doctor also died of cancer. And I just, you know, the light bulb moment came up and I just was like, you know, this doesn't seem to be working. Nobody's getting well, not even my doctor. So I just threw everything out the window and said, okay, I'm going to study nutrition. I have learned how to cook really great in London and from my mother. And I'm going to just start experimenting with ingredients and uh, at the time I started, I read this article, it was very extensive in Life Magazine on the new farming practices where they were using huge amounts of antibiotics for the animals because they were raising them in such unhealthy, inhumane conditions that they couldn't survive otherwise. And they were also giving them hormones to fatten them up faster. And so I was researching this and then the graphic pictures of the animals in these horrific conditions was just, just heart wrenching. And I'm a huge animal lover. And I put down that article and turned to my husband and I said, I'm becoming a vegetarian. I'm going to raise the kids this way. I am not going to participate in this kind of treatment of creatures. And these antibiotics and these hormones are horrible for us. And so, he just said, okay. And I was married to an environmental trial lawyer, uh, 23 years. And so I learned a lot about water quality, air quality, farm runoff, uh, for pesticides, fertilizers, electromagnetic field, microwave dangers, just the various components. And as I started on this journey, all of this information that he was having in his trials and court cases 
was putting together a big puzzle for me. And I started realizing how, you know, everything in the environment impacts us, you know, the toxins, the electromagnetic fields, the, the different aspects of that. And so I hired a new doctor after my doctor died. And I told her, I said, I'm not doing any pharmaceuticals anymore. I'm going to study nutrition. I want you to just take my blood once a year and tell me how it looks or, you know, if I look like I'm putting myself in danger. And over the next year and a half, year or so, I lost the weight without even trying. Almost all of my problems I'd struggled with my whole life just disappeared. I, my carpal tunnel syndrome in my wrist just went away. My acid reflux disappeared. Uh, you know, like I just said, the weight just uh, melted off without me even trying. Uh, I started feeling so great. My acute anemia I'd battled my whole life since I was two just vanished, which really surprised people because I'm from Texas. Everybody's raised on meat and they're like, you've got to eat meat to have iron. And uh, being acute anemic, everybody was quite amazed that my acute anemia vanished when I became a vegetarian and started eating more organic, healthier. I started, I joined the seed exchange. I raised my kids really myself. I was uh, very much a at home mom. And we started our organic garden and really ventured off into the great unknown back then. And there were no whole foods markets back then or any place. And so I found local farmers that were growing sustainably without toxins. And I started finding these, these places around Dallas that I could resource my food for my family if I didn't have enough in my own garden. And it was just a, a wonderful education adventure. And as I did this, my doctor was amazed that my blood tests were so fantastic. And my children's pediatrician told me they were the healthiest kids he'd ever seen. And I knew I was on the right track. So I just kept kept going. And, you know, it wasn't always perfect. And I, I learned, you know, some of the things the hard way. But you know, along the way, I think I've picked up a lot of great information. And my own personal doctor is really who got me started because she knew how healthy I was and how I had reversed all these different problems without any kind of uh, pharmaceutical drug. And she actually started referring people to me for nutritional counseling before I ever had credentials or had even written my books and became one of my biggest fans. And she, when I wrote my books, she would put her book, my books all over her office. And I really started writing my books because I was helping people and I found myself, you know, everybody needs hydration. Everybody needs to eat whole, real, you know, food that's full of nutrition. People are eating the wrong kind of salt or they're not eating salt at all. And I started having people say, do you have this written down somewhere? And so I started compiling that and and now I've got seven books. <laughs> wow. And many, many wow. medical doctors actually use my books, especially around Dallas and Texas as their nutritional resource guide in their practice. And I, I taught medical uh, or chiropractic students at Parker University for five years in the healing diet. And now I'm even I'm internet. I'm a certified international wildlife rehabilitator and I'm now counseling veterinarians and people around the world for their pets as well, because I'm an animal diet expert on that as well. So it's you know, it's an interesting world, but so many things that work for us can correlate into working for your animals as well. And so anyway, it's just, it's been an interesting adventure and I have felt better in these years than I ever felt the beginning part of half part of my life. And I am always well, I don't even contemplate the fact that I would even need to go to a doctor for anything unless I maybe broke a bone or something. But I have a lot of medical doctors that are my friends who have come to my nutrition courses and learn that. And uh, I do go to my chiropractor for adjustments because I had scoliosis and I have never had surgery or a brace. And I've, and, you know, I believe in doing things holistically in a healthy way where you fix the problem, you know, whatever it is, you go to the root of the problem and you fix it. 
you know, if you're lacking nutrition, you get more nutrition. If your your bones are out of alignment, you you get your bones into alignment. And so anyway, that's kind of been my my program. I don't want to mask any kind of pain or mask any kind of situation. I want to go to the root of it and find out what's the cause and then fix it. And so yeah. that's my approach. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. So th thank you for that backstory yeah, and that no backstory. pun intended, I'm no sure to mask sure. all the um, symptoms. Right. But to your point, which I, which I love the idea of let's not, let's go to the root problem. Not, not let's fix the symptom, right? The, the many right. symptoms. Let's actually fix the root problem where it started from there. And so that's a, a amazing um, credentials. Will you do me a favor, if you don't mind, give you, give you a shameless plug. Tell me which one of the seven books that you've written would you think our enrichers would get the most out of? I know all seven of them are great, but, but let's pick one that you think every one of them should be distributed out maybe to the country, possibly. Well, I think my premier book is How to Be a Healthy Vegetarian that's in its second edition. And it is indexed. It's got an amazing amount of resources in the back of the book. It has half recipes in it. So you you learn a lot of health information, but you're also able to implement that by trying some of the recipes. And a lot of these recipes are ones I still make all the time and I raise my children with. And this book, because it's indexed and so comprehensive, this is the one that's used by most of the medical professionals for their practice because they're able to look things up quickly. And I actually update my books every year and make them current with what I know at the time. So all my books, because I'm the publisher, I'm able to update those books. So when you order the book now, it's going to be updated as compared to one that was bought three years ago or four years ago. And I like being able to do that. I like being able to, able to be in control of my information and maintain the quality. Yeah. So, so that, that would probably be, well, and Nancy, even there's... though if they're not a vegetarian, it teaches people how to add more vegetables to their diet, which is what most people need to do. <laughs> so in, in, in Richards, get ready, get your pen and paper out. Nancy, again, so you don't have to rewind this or whatever. Nancy, again, is going to tell you the exact title of the book that you need to go get. Go ahead, Nancy. Okay, the book is How to Be a Healthy Vegetarian. Second edition, I would get the second edition and uh, get the newest version. And so whichever one you order now off of Barnes & Noble or Amazon would be, would be the latest version. I think it's really important for the listeners because I'm thinking back to me before I made any changes. The title of the book, How to Be a Healthy Vegetarian, is going to turn off a lot of people that are super programmed into like, I have to have meat. Like I was one of those people. I would have not listened to that book, but here's the deal. Just because you get the book doesn't mean you have to go 100% vegetarian. Okay. <laughs> what it means is, is there's some healthy recipes in there for you that you can add into your life. I mean, I know a lot of meat eaters, like my friends from Eastern Oregon, will pick apples off the trees and eat them. Nobody says anything. Well, guess what? You're eating like a vegetarian when you eat a fresh apple. And there's nothing wrong with that. So as you add in more healthy stuff to your life, it's not that we teach people in the beginning to just give up meat. I mean, some people might have to if they have stage four cancer and that's what's needed. But it's just add in more fresh organic produce, more sprouts, more things like that that have not been adulterated, have not been sprayed, that are more natural that come from the ecosystem that we're a part of. So I just want to say that. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we want to get into some of the solutions that Nancy's been, uh, and maybe some stories too that you can share with some people, um, of some people you've helped and some of the solutions she's been delivering to thousands and thousands of clients over 30 years. We'll be right back. Are you concerned about being able to get all of your affairs in order during this trying time? Are you troubled by what would happen if you ever became incapacitated? Maybe you've been procrastinating in the past to address these issues, but now, more than ever before, you know just how important it is to get everything documented. 
Well, don't worry, because we can get you taken care of right from the comfort of your own home. Welcome to the revolutionary My Life Card Plan Estate Plan Processing Platform, home of the last estate plan you'll ever need. We are very pleased you are here, and rest assured, we can offer you a complete estate planning experience regardless of where in the 50 states you may live. Our unique transformational system combines efficiency, convenience, and professional support at levels you never thought possible for setting up your estate plan. Moreover, we will provide you with powerful, user-friendly dynamics that put you in total control of your plan throughout your lifetime. Call us today at 888-316-6040 or go to www.csifinancialgroup.com and our team of specialists will be there to assist you every step of the way. What's up, Enrichers? Tim James here with my co-host, Carter Wilcox. And today we've got Nancy Addison in the house. Nancy's backstory is amazing. She's from two years old, getting all messed up and anemia and, and diabetes and all this stuff. And she figured out how to heal herself naturally by going back into nature, getting into the dirt, getting into the soil, growing her own garden, raising her kids that way. And she turned around all of her health issues and raised some of the healthiest kids on the planet. So, Nancy, why don't you share with us, like... Um, we want to get into some solutions, but just, you know, recently, like just let's just take some recent things, um, maybe one or two clients that called you up and that you've helped and then they've had similar results as you. What's Thanks. I mean, so much of it is and I want to address what you you said about the meat, but yeah. A lot of my clients are not vegetarians, but they have health issues they are struggling with. And, and really, I think like Tim was talking about, it's all about the quality. And I think you need to, regardless of whether you're a vegetarian or not, address the quality of your water, address the quality of your food. And that is something paramount that I learned over the years is, which is so important. And you know, people will tell me I'm allergic to this food. And I'll say, well, was that food grown with herbicides and pesticides was it a genetically modified seed was it picked green and all of those make a difference because foods that are picked green are a different food than ones that are picked vine ripened or tree ripened that have salvestrols in them that are natural healing components of food you know if they have genetically modified seeds that they're grown from, they're going to have poison literally built into the food. These do not wash off. And almost all the foods grown with these toxic chemicals and pesticides have these toxic chemicals and pesticides in the food. And so you're basically eating toxic food. So you want to eat as clean, fresh food as possible. And I think that is really important. You are asking me about some of the people that I work with and I, I work with such a array of people. Somebody I thought, think I might mention is I was, I don't know if anybody remembers the show Dallas, but <laughs> who shot JR? Was, JR was my client and uh, Larry Hagman, when they were doing the second series of Dallas, he, got diagnosed with throat cancer and he had diabetes as a result of pharmaceutical medications that he had taken for his liver transplant he had had 16 years earlier. And, you know, this guy loved to eat and he loved sweets and he loved you know, pies and he loved sugar and he, he had a real problem on the set because they would have these big tables out everywhere that had muffins and white refined breads and cookies and all kinds of things for the actors. And so he hired me to be his chef and nutritionist while he was going through, he chose to do the mainstream medical chemotherapy and radiation. And so I was trying to basically offset that by providing healthy, raw, organic, vegetarian food for him. And my, my research shows that it actually helps those types of treatments not kill you and, and be a little more effective if you are eating really healthy. And he really struggled with 
cha- get, getting off the sugar. And part of it is out of sight, out of mind. And, and part of it is just really setting your mind to it. He had finally gone through a whole week of doing my food, just my food without cheating. And he came in one day and he had had a blood test and he goes, Nancy, I had the best blood test I've had in 16 years. You know, he was just like elated. It was just remarkable to him. And he said, do you want to know how I did it? And I said, yes. He goes, well, I'm an actor. And I pretended I was in a movie and I had to eat this way. (laughs) And he said, and so (laughs) he had written his life script for him to eat the food that I was making for him. And that had helped him stick with his program. And he did really well until uh, he left to go back to California. And I was real proud of him except for a week he spent with Randy Travis. I'm not sure what he did, ate that week, but <laughs> yeah, what, what, it was no, no matter, He could have put anything into his body during that week, right? <laughs> but, you know, part of it is a quality. And one of the things he, he had was a sweet tooth. And so once in a while I would let him, he, he had been an alcoholic and these people who would interview him would come over and literally bring a bottle of liquor with him and drink it in front of him, which was kind of torturous. So uh, I had told Larry he could have a little bit of stevia and I ha- specifically would shop for him and pick out which what I wanted to give him. And when I started working with him, he said he was on a pharmaceutical drug that he could not have any grapefruit with. And if he had any, it would kill him. So he was having an interview this day and he went in the kitchen and he's like put some water in a glass and he put a little uh, of uh, cranberry juice in it and he put it in a wine glass and he said, look, Nancy, I have some rosé. So he was going to sit in front of this interviewer with his his non-alcoholic rosé to kind of help him cope with this person drinking in front of him. And he went over to the counter and he picked up this little bottle and he put a drop in the glass. And I looked at that and I said, where'd you get that? He goes, oh, this guy sent me this box of stevia and I've been, he's been having it for a couple of days. And he, I had gotten a call from his personal assistant the day before and he had said, Larry isn't feeling as great as he could. Is there, you know, something going on with the food? And I was like, no, there's nothing going on with the food. And I was trying to figure out why he wouldn't be feeling as well as he did. And I looked on the bottle of the stevia this person had sent him and it had great seed (laughs) extract as the first thing and he was literally killing himself wow. by drinking that and I was just like you cannot you cannot have anything I do I just I taught his personal assistant you've got to read all these ingredients this is critical and so anyway I think it's just important to know you know if, even if xylitol is a it's a fairly decent sweetener if it is made in a in a com- country that is not toxic like you never want to buy xylitol from a com- country like china but you want to make sure you're reading the ingredients and seeing what is on it and that's why i love tim's supplements is he has really clean chemical free supplements that don't have any of these questionable additives to them like magnesium stearate that can make these supplements worthless and and I think quality and purity is is really a key factor but I do think everybody can eat healthier if they create that that film scenario for themselves and they're the star of their show and they just need to create that life scenario for them that they are going to eat that way and that's going to be who they are and I think that was just really great advice. I, yeah, I, you know, Nancy, I, I love that I love idea, that, that, that idea, story that, that you just shared. That you just um, shared. Um, so it was great. It was extract, is that what you were saying, Tim? That was the number one ingredient in, in Nancy? Well, yeah. So yeah. typically in stevias, um, they'll put alcohol in as a preservative, right? But for me, I'm trying to take stevia in because I want no sugar. Alcohol converts to sugar in the body. So why would I take something that's got alcohol in it that's going to convert to sugar, you see? 
I guess it would be better than just going plain sugar. So I always get the one with the grapefruit seed extract. But in Larry's case, he was taking some pharmaceutical drug that reacted with grapefruit. So that's why it didn't work. There's a brand called Stevita brand Stevie, and it's, it's preserved with a, uh, with a grapefruit seed extract. That's the one I recommend, I guess, now for everybody, unless you're on some weird pharmaceutical drug that causes a, it's contraindicative. But, um, and then Stevia is just on a side note, because my mind, the way I think, if it's white powdered Stevia, you don't ever want to buy that or put that into your body. That means it's been processed with chemicals. Stevia is a green leaf. And if it's done properly in the powdered form, it should be dried in its whole leaf form and gently broken and grinded into little particles. And then it'd be a green color. And it's about 40 times sweeter than sugar. Now, the, the, the clear one's about 100 times sweeter than sugar. But you want to make sure that it's not preserved in alcohol. Again, unless you're Larry Hagman and you're taking some weird medication. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you know, oh, um, and, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, let me. I, I accidentally said xylitol instead of stevia a while ago. And xylitol is just another uh, sweetener that I recommend for some people, but it is highly toxic for animals. So uh, just, just a side note there. I meant stevia when I was, when I was Nancy, saying Nancy, why don't you, for, let's just take an average person. They're listening. They're just like I was 11 years ago, living their life, doing their thing. But they probably gained 30, 40 pounds, maybe more. Uh, not feeling good, tired. Um, maybe they have a few issues. Maybe they're on a pharmaceutical drug or two. Maybe they got some stress on their elbow or they're, they got gas and bloating or poop problems. Um, what would you say are the top three things that that person could do? Walk us through uh, a simple, basic something that you would recommend to your clients. That's a great question. And I have some very good specifics that many of my clients have said, even if they just did this, they, their health really started to reverse and they started feeling better. One of the things I really recommend is having a big glass of warm, structured, mineral rich water first thing in the morning before you do anything else. I think that gets your system moving. It really helps people who are constipated the warmness of it helps open up your blood vessels and get your blood flowing. And most people are chronically intercellularly dehydrated and also lacking minerals. And people do not realize that they're lacking these minerals. But the herbicides that are used worldwide that are water soluble are now in our rainwater. So we're all exposed to these. And the main one, which is in Roundup Ready, is a mineral chelator. So it destroys all the minerals in the soil wherever it touches. And it would not, none of those minerals would be in the foods. These minerals are also called electrolytes. Uh, the word electrolyte is a fancy medical term for the word salt. But most people don't realize that mineral rich mine salt is a completely different thing than the white refined version that most of them, most people grew up on. And like Tim was saying about the stevia color, if your salt is white, it's probably been bleached and it's probably had all the minerals removed from it. I, I don't know who thinks of these crazy things, but you know, somebody decided to take salt, which is extremely important for us. I mean, we are the salt of the earth. We will die without it. And these minerals, the electrolyte is, is just a fancy medical term for the word salt. And salt has color. The minerals have color. So, so uh, there's a mine up in Utah called that's mined by a company named Redman. It's called Real Salt. Your col your your salt should always have like a pink color to it because that shows that it has natural iodine in it to support your thyroid and also iron. And if your salt is white, I would recommend probably throwing it in the trash. And I even tell people with animals this. Uh, a friend has a, had a white salt lick out for her horses. And I'm like, throw that thing away and get one that's natural mine salt that's old, an old ocean that's been sealed off by a volcanic activity over the years. But it was before pollution. And it was before all these minerals and nutrients were depleted. And so these these old mine salts like the one in Bolivia or the Himalayan ones or the one up in Utah, those are going to be completely different from any other salt that you're buying that might even just say sea salt. Uh, salts out of the ocean today actually have a lot of mercury in them. So you could get 
mercury poisoning from just eating salts that are taken from the, the ocean today. But w what I recommend for people who are drinking tap water is to, to drink a really high quality water that maybe you reverse osmosis or filter yourself and remove the chlorine and the fluoride and the glyphosate and all the toxic chemicals. And then you can add your salt back in because when you refine anything, when you purify anything, you're taking out all the bad things, but you're also removing the good things. And in real life, water by divine, give, divine the divine gives us water with whole real form to it. It has a structure and it has minerals in it. So, you know, water that's from like a watermelon or a cantaloupe is a different kind of water than something that's coming out of your tap, your your faucet that that might have chlorine and fluoride and, and uh, different toxic chemicals in it. So you want to have a clean water and then you want to add your minerals back into it. So I put like a fourth a teaspoon for 16 ounces and I stir it really fast until it creates a vortex and that gives it back its structure. So Dr. Pollock at the University of Washington found out that when you stir your water really fast till it creates a vortex, it gives it a structure which is very unique. Water is a unique element that people have studied for hundreds and hundreds of years and are still mystified by it. But water has a memory and a structure and the fourth stage is a gel like structure. And so when you do this, this water that you drink is going to be four to 10 times more hydrating than water that's not structured and not mineral rich. And if you're drinking empty water with no minerals in it, then your body's going to be pulling minerals from the body in order to process it, which would deplete you even more. And I think with the levels of anxiety and stress today, these minerals are more and more valuable, especially like magnesium, which is can reduce anxiety or uh, insomnia and uh, muscle cramping and things like that. So I would start with mineral rich structured water first thing in the morning. And if it's warm, it's the same temperature about as your body. And so it's absorbed better. When you drink cold liquids, it can shock the body and it can shut down your digestive system for about an hour and a half. So I recommend if people really want to hydrate that they avoid car uh, carbonated drinks, which make your bones weak, uh, avoid things that have sweeteners in them and also try to drink a really good quality water. And if you have well water or are near a natural spring somewhere, you know, look into possibly having that kind of water, but you want to structure it before you drink it. And then the second thing would be to well, really hey, Nancy, just eat whole Nancy, real, Nancy, real food. Nancy, let's hold on for just a Pardon? second. Let's hold on for just a second. I want to give okay. people some solutions people because some solutions this water because thing that you're sharing is so important. Sharing. It's, it's very important. Right. And it, it's, you've been doing this for 30 years. I've been doing this for 11 years. Water's the number one thing I talk about and I do same thing that you do, except now I'm going to start stirring my water anyway. Yeah. So because people are like, well, okay, where do how do I clean my water? What do I do? Because we gave them the problem. Now I'm going to give them the solution. Like for right now, you can just go to mypurifiedwater.com. That's mypurifiedwater.com, and you can get a meeting with Danusha, and she will show you how to get your water clean and how to restructure the water. And um, and remember, you can always do the stir thing. So what we do is the same thing: lukewarm water in the morning, first thing. And the water is purified, restructured, and then after I drink it, I put a, about an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of salt in my hand, and I throw it in my mouth. I've been doing the same thing that you're doing, and this is the same thing I share. So the solution for water, guys, and if you can't afford the water cleaning system, the purifiers and the restructuring things, you can at least get gallon glass jars and go down to your local grocery store and get single purified water, either reverse osmosis, deionization, or distillation pack your water and, and save up your money until you can get s some of these systems in your home. Because if you're mostly made of water and tomorrow you're going to drink water and a week from now, you're going to drink water and a month from now and a year from now, then you want to get your water right. So I think it's a very important thing that she just shared. Um, if you don't get anything else out of this talk today, this should be the focus of you and your family is to get your water right. And then once you get that done, come on back, listen to the episode again. And then we're going to go to point two right now. Go ahead. Um, that is all great information. Thank you. 
I think the second thing is actually a life. Well, the second thing would be eating quality whole real food in its whole real form, you know, mm -hmm. not out of a package, not, not out of a can and definitely not irritated or microwaved. Those all change the frequency and the frequency of your food and the way your body absorbs it. So as I've researched all of this in the last 35 years, I've found that food has a vibrancy and we absorb that energy. And whenever we tamper with that by adding herbicides, pesticides, processing, chemicals, uh, irradiation or pasteurization or microwaving, any of that actually changes the vibration. And Dr. Pop, P-O-P-P, -P, is a German scientist who studied the, the vibration of food for decades. And he found that when food is in its whole real God-given form that's raised humanely and organically, it goes into the DNA and actually tells the body to heal itself. It's a harmonic frequency. But if it's tampered with in any way, uh, by processing chemicals, microwaving, radiation, any of these things, it makes it a fractured frequency, which tells your DNA to actually make cancer cells. And his work really correlates really well with Dr. Tomini Jimenez, who has got a, a holistic cancer clinic down in Mexico. And he found that food, the molecules in food have electrons that spin around them. And he was trying to find out if honey caused cancer or fed cancer, because everybody says sugar feeds cancer. So he was studying it and he found that all food has electrons around the molecules that either spin left or right. And I do believe this correlates directly with Dr. Pop's information, but Dr. Jimenez found that when the electrons revolve to the left, they do not feed disease, they do not cause cancer, they do not feed cancer. And so honey was one of those. It's a natural God-given food. And he found that the foods that have the electrons that revolve to the right that do cause disease, do create disease and cancer in the body or feed cancer, they revolve to the right, and those are the artificial chemicals, the, the ones that have been manipulated by man, the ones that have been irradiated or microwaved or, or genetically modified. Those all had electrons that spin to the left. So I tell people when you're looking at your food choices, you know, think, is this in its more God-given form or is this more tampered with by man? And you can try to pick the best version of that for your food. And then... I'd say my third tip would be lifestyle. And I think most people just gulp their food down and they do not chew it and they don't sit down to enjoy a meal and they eat it in their car or on the run or standing up at the refrigerator. And I tell them, you know, if you're eating at the refrigerator, pull up a chair, <laughs> but you know, get a plate, put your food on a plate sit down and really chew your food until it's liquid when you swallow it and and relax because i think you know when we eat in these fast-paced types of styles we are in a fight or flight mode and you're not able to really process your food effectively and you also may be eating a whole lot more than you would normally if you stop and chew your food and really enjoy it. You know, I, I tend to think, you know, do it like the French do. They spend hours having a meal with their family and they savor it and they really enjoy it. I say, enjoy each and every bite, savor each and every bite, chew it as slowly as you can and really digest it better in that way. And it takes your mind about 15 minutes before it knows it's full. So if you're eating very slowly, you're gonna eat a lot less food than if you're just gulping it down and washing it down with a cold drink that's shutting down your digestive system for an hour and a half. So, you know, part of that is just kind of rethinking how you're going to do your meals to people's health. And it takes them out of a fight or flight mode, makes them breathe more deeply. And that will actually start activating your own stem cells and helping your body heal. If we're in fight or flight mode, 
we we are not utilizing our healing components of our body and we aren't even thinking properly because we're kind of in a reptilian brain state at that point. And you just want to breathe deeply and relax and enjoy your food and realize that that's one of the wonderful things about being a human or a man or a woman and, and really having all this wonderful food that we can savor. And, and so really take advantage of that. And, and, if you do that, I really believe people's weight adjusts itself and can can really, uh, you know, fit fit your lifestyle and your body better. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, those I think are some well, wonderful tips. Are some wonderful tip. The recap here is recap here is the water with some structured water with some some mineralized salt. Um, eat whole foods, stay away from processed foods and irradiated foods and pasteurized foods and boxed and canned foods. Just try to get them as fresh and natural as possible. Fresh is best. And then number three is the lifestyle. Really just, you know, especially when you're sitting down, just enjoying every moment, chewing your food well and uh, keeping yourself in a calm state and avoiding liquids with meals, which is like one of our big things over here that we teach in our core for secrets. So, Nancy, no wonder you're so darn healthy. Well, thank you. I practice what I preach and it's be it's become part of me. I don't know how to live differently anymore. I know. It's nice when you get on autopilot, right? You don't even have to think about it. Your lifestyle just creates, you've created an environment. Your lifestyle creates an environment so that your cells literally thrive on a microscopic level so that you thrive. All right. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, Nancy gets to ask Carter questions about financial stuff. We'll be right back. You want the absolute best for yourself, and you want it to be easy. That's why we created Green 85. It helps with detoxifying the body gently. We're proud it's chemical-free, unlike almost all other supplements you'll find. Bottom line, Green 85 will get you healthier. We look forward to hearing what Green 85 did for you. To get this product and our other amazing products, go to chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. Welcome back, Enrichers. Tim James here with my co-host, Carter Wilcoxon. We have Nancy hey. Addison in the house from organichealthylife.com. She's a wonderful lady. She's transformed her health. And um, she's helped so many people. And what I like about it too, it's so funny. It's like no, no formal schooling in the beginning in, in, in nutrition, yet <clears throat> her doctor started asking her questions and referring her patients because of results. And that's what we like to talk about here is results. So speaking of results, one thing that's, um, which is good is that, you know, there are other forms of abundance in your life. Once you have your health dialed in, there's also relationship abundance and, and spiritual abundance and financial abundance. So right now we want to talk about what we can possibly share with to, with Nancy um, to help her with any with some financial abundance. So Nancy, why don't you go ahead and ask Carter any question on you know financial stuff that you may have? Thank you. I, I'm going to ask this on behalf of many of my clients who have struggled over the years with health costs and many of them have come to me after you know spending years trying all these other pharmaceutical types of things and doctors and things not working so usually they find me kind of as a last resort they go holistic at the at the very end but many of them struggle with the finances that being ill creates in their life because many of them have spent lots of money on a lot of these different things that their doctors have proposed. And so my question would be for, for people who have someone in their family who may be struggling with a health issue or they have someone who's been harmed and is, is having to be uh, taken care of uh, more because of a situation and, uh, and they need more care and it costs, costs more, how, what are your best tips for families that want to maintain their home and 
and want to thrive, even though they may have one of their family members or, or relatives struggling with some really extreme costs associated with their, their health situation. Yeah. Um, so Nancy, thank you for that, <clears throat> for that question. And, you know, it, it's interesting as you were um, sort of teeing up the question, it really elicits a lot of different things that I've seen tragically that happen um, through, you know, through families as they get older or, you know, that compound effect of bad, poor lifestyle choices, which is why we are big, huge fans of proactiveness, right? And 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 I think that that's a lot of things what you try to do is now that they've come to you because they've, they're like, I'm going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at it to be healthier now. I've tried all these other things. I've tried the, you know, the the, the typical uh, issue is that the, the SAD diet, right? The standard American diet has has compounded these issues that by the time they get to you, you know, there's like, I'll try it. You, you tell me, Nancy, I'll do whatever it is you tell me to do. Uh, I, I, I would imagine. And I know Tim probably has this thing as well. So unfortunately, you know, we, we do everything we can through our uh, education of estate planning and financial planning and legacy planning, this, this triumvirate of, uh, of proactive planning for clients. And, you know, we talk a lot about how tools that are used are, are typically going to have to take away from maybe other areas of your life that you may be spending money on. Um, you know, one of the things that we, uh, of course, try to encourage is to proactively educate clients on here's the things that are going to happen to you as you age. And here's why you need to potentially buy long-term care insurance. That's one of the, that's one of those types of issues. And we, and we really provide a lot of education and solutions on that, but you know, all too often, much like, um, you know, Larry Hagman, maybe as he was acting like an actor and he's going to do all this, you know, they get all this information, they're going to do it. And then they just never pull the trigger, right? They procrastinate on doing things. And then it becomes a situation where now it's too late. So what we really want to do is, uh, and, you know, Tim, your parents right now, you've said to me, we really need to get this stuff done, mom and dad, right? Your own parents are actually going through our process on helping to solve what a lot of um you know, middle America, if you will, working class men and women don't have access to. And that's these three things where we combine estate planning, which is really just everything that you own, right? It, it, that's what your estate is. Financial planning and, and how all that stuff works together. And then ultimately the legacy planning, which answers the question, how will you be remembered? Our process that we've incorporated is all about solving these three things. And we try to be as proactive as possible. And we hope we haven't gotten to that, um, the triage part of their life, right? Because then it almost becomes, you know, too late. So we, we really are fans of giving what we call the three E's. Educate, enlighten, and empower clients and our clients and our advisors' clients to take the, um, to, to, remove the barriers, if you will, and the hurdles that have traditionally been there for them in a very cost-effective, efficient manner. And, and, and that's what we are really doing to be impactful throughout the country. And we can be able to do this a lot. Another one of the things that clients need to understand uh, as we educate them is death is actually an easy way to sell someone's estate. The bigger issue is conservatorship. And what happens if you can't articulate because you're, you know, you're in a coma or you're, you've had some bad health issues that have happened and you're in a hospital, you know, who is your agent? Who's speaking on your behalf? Both of you guys may remember uh, an incident that happened in Florida about, I think it's been about 15, 20 years ago now, Terry Shivo. And um, because Terry Shivo did not have her advanced medical directives and what it was that she wanted to have happen, her family members, husband and mom and dad, they, they fought until and she was in the hospital forever and, and on the um, uh, on the breathing device. And, and and she didn't have a voice for any for herself any longer because she, she's in a coma. So what we make sure that we do is we incorporate part of the estate planning aspect on 
putting the documented specifics in an area that is easily accessible for family members and for doctors, uh, you know, the attending physicians, wherever you might end up, something might happen, not in your local town, right? You might be on vacation in California and you end up in a hospital. Where do you go to find out what you want to have happen to you, uh, especially in the last 18 months, things that have happened, you know, uh, COVID and not being able to have, you know, other family members come in. Well, we have the proactiveness in an area that clients can go to in a very safe, secure, digitized way where we democratize this and the uh, attending physician can simply get into their uh, client console, as we call it, and they'll know exactly how they want to be administered and handled. Even if you don't have an agent on, you know, their hand, you know, someone who's speaking on your on your behalf, your durable power of attorney, um, you know, it's, it's all online and we do this all digitized and we've had a lot of success. But this is about and I think that you're probably hopefully a fan of this. This is about proactively getting this done. Again, going back to we just removed the barriers, the, the procrastination that our clients have been having to what uh, in their mind is I've got to get my affairs in order. We bring a team of specialists to them so we can get this done. And we start with education. And, and I think that's what you probably do a lot of them while you've written your book. So um, hopefully that's given you at least enough information uh, to uh, to be dangerous or to share that or whatever. So um, hey, Carter, can I share something here? Yeah, absolutely. So Nancy, when you're talking about these people, they have a catastrophic event. How do they protect their assets? Well, what Carter's really alluding to here is that it's it's a little late for this, right? It's a little late. We have to. So for the other listeners, we want to get tell them to get proactive and get ahead of things. Right. Getting yeah. a trust, getting a trust set up is very important. You don't have to be a billionaire to get a trust set up. I'm finishing on round two in 31 minutes. I'm having another meeting with uh, um, my mom and dad who are in their early 80s and our attorney through Carter's network to get the estate plan buttoned up. All right. And then we have one final meeting and we're done. And we have all this dialed in. So now all their stuff is protected. So if something happens to one of them and uh, they can't take, nobody can take their money, right? They, the, other, the other spouse remaining will have full access to everything in the house. Another thing for people that are older that might be out of money, but they need to take care of someone. Maybe they want to have in-home care, which is much cheaper than care somewhere else. And you get to choose the person that works with the spouse and if they don't do the good job, you can fire them and get somebody else or you're more in control and it's less expensive is getting a reverse mortgage. People think these are bad, but you can get a reverse mortgage on your property. You can still live in the house until both you or the spouse die. And then at the end, there's insurance to cover it. So it's called a non-recourse loan so that if there's any equity left, the kids can sell it. They take the money or they pay off the loan and they one of them moves in and they make a new mortgage payment to that. Or they just if or if mom and dad live there forever and they owed $1.2 million on the house, but the house is only worth 250000 because the market crash. The kids walk away scot-free, and mom and dad really maximized that house and got a lot of value out of it. And don't worry about it. The government took a hefty 2.5% fee up front or 2% fee up front to, into an insurance pool to cover that difference, so everybody's cool. So those are a couple things that um, I would share on, on that. That's great. Thank you. That That's very helpful. My mother had a, a trust and, and that was very helpful for us as, as a family. Yeah, well, you know, and, and the, the reason why that we um, our foundational approach is starting with uh, building out your estate plan, uh, much like the, the whole health and wealth podcast, you know, it doesn't matter about your wealth if you don't have your health. Right. But once you've got their health all figured out, you know, how do you want to have the proper distribution? How are you going to uh, systematically or efficiently make sure that exactly what you want to have happen happens when the inevitable happens for all of us? So the, the issue is, is that most clients that our advisors work with and those like, you know, um, Tim's mom and dad, they don't really have the access. And we've just really democratized that access. And, and I'm going to give a, a plug now to our uh, our company called Epic Services Company. And you can go there, epicservicescompany.com to see how we work, but not only with advisors, how advisors bring their clients to us, but also the team members that facilitate and put all this stuff together. 
and, and how we do it. You can get a, a, a wealth of information there. But yeah, it, it really is, you know, you're being proactive with your health, being proactive with your wealth. It's 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 really the only thing that you can do if you want to do things properly. And, and unfortunately, you know, if you've lived a lifestyle where you're just like, I mean, I, I go back to thinking about um, Mickey Mantle. Um, and th this is maybe a, a childhood memory for yourself. I know you're a little bit, uh, you know, older than Tim and I are, uh, Nancy, but you know, Mickey Mantle, everybody loved Mickey Mantle, right? Even if you hated the Yankees, you knew who Mickey Mantle was. I remember as a kid, whenever he was given his press conference about, um, I, I want to say that he was mid to late fifties, early sixties, maybe getting ready to die. And he had lived this rock and roll lifestyle and he was basically crying. I'm, I'm just going off a of memory here, but it's like, if I'd have known I was going to live this long, I would have treated my body so much better. And and I, that always, you know, I, I'll never forget how that was like. And I'm like, I don't ever want to be in that situation. So, you know, in Richards, listen up, you know, it, it's either day one or one day. Right. That's what that's you have to start somewhere and, and make today day one of a life of abundance and living a lifestyle. And it's never too late to start. And, you know, hopefully this has been one of those opportunities that we've given with the the information, this wealth of information that Nancy gave today. Make sure you check out her book. Um, and, and it's really one of those proactiveness that we are encouraging everybody to take. So um, anyway, Nancy, that that's my that's a lot of my feedback and and hopefully that was good for you and nancy where do people best find you thank you and that was all great information both of y'all uh, my website is organichealthylife.com and you can contact me there or find me through that do that link and you can get my radio shows there that uh, link is at the top and also my books which i have seven now and there's a lot of good free information on my website that is available as well as my free newsletter that comes out every month. Yeah, I'd highly recommend people check out her website. And she has a radio show that's been going on for a long time. She has over 40,000 listeners on iHeartRadio. It's a pretty large show and um, it's a great show. She had this really cool dude on from Chemical Free Body a couple of times. Check those episodes out. It's awesome. <laughs> Nancy, thank you so yeah. much for coming on. Carter, I'll let you wrap it up, brother. Yeah, well, so he, I wanted to wrap it up. And Richards, hold on just one second, because I actually had a question I was going to ask, but you know, the, the second segment went a little bit longer, and that's okay. It's great, but you said something in there that I actually want to get a little bit more information. If you can, you know, just spend a couple more minutes. We have uh, our heart and soul, you know, family pet Pearl. You can check out her Instagram, Pearl the Bulldoggy. Um, Pearl is an old English bulldog. She is um, coming up on almost 10 years old. She is the sweetest dog on the face of the planet. You were saying something about animals and everything. Can you give me and my wife, who we just, we we keep saying, Pearl, you're going to live another 10 years, right? I mean, she's already, I think, right at her expected uh, length of uh, you know life. But is there one little thing that you could help us with that maybe we are doing or are not doing that can help extend, uh, you know, her longevity and, and her quality of life. Absolutely. And I, I have to admit the water information I would say would be top of mind for, for animals because they need those minerals and they need the hydration just like we do. And they want their, I, I do what I do with my water for my pets as well. And I had a yellow lab that lived to be uh, 17 and I've had a Siamese cat live to be 21. And I believe that there's a lot that you can do. And I, I think animal problems, health situations, really go hand in hand with what people are doing. And there, there's as much cancer and diabetes in pets as there is in people. And I believe it directly reflects the kind of food they're getting, the kind of water they're getting, and the kind of care they're giving. So uh, th this would be really important to give them mineral rich, structured, good quality water, and not just give them tap water, because that can that can really harm them. And the 
the chlorine is the first chemical ever developed to kill people in warfare and it destroys the vitamin E in your body and uh, has been shown to cause cancer. So you want to you know, avoid, avoid those chemicals as much as possible and try to get a quality water and quality food for your pets and try to avoid the processed foods. Uh, I just uh, started doing recipes for a little company down in Houston that makes pet food by hand. And the people are having really great results with my recipes. And uh, I, I'm going to just say this is a really cute company that was started by a father, a stepfather whose daughter was autistic and she's a young adult and all the, all the food and everything's being made by educate, uh, learning challenged young adults. And so it's a very special little group. So all the food is filled with love and, and I highly recommend that for all of y'all who have pets is, you know, I have always given my pets the same quality food as, as I, as I eat, they get organic, they get healthy, whole food. They don't get things out of a package that are microwaved or, or processed. And, and that would, that would be my top tip really for, awesome. for doing that. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for that, Nancy. I, I really appreciate that. And, and obviously, you know, my wife, uh, is one of the main reasons why I wanted to have this on here. She, you know, um, she's my biggest, fan and my biggest strongest supporter so she listened to every one of these podcasts when they when they um get launched so um enrichers what's the name you. of that company though yeah yeah i was gonna say enrichers we probably want to know what the name of this company is that you just said if you don't mind share that with the enrichers just real quick and then we'll wrap everything up sure it's called jesse's bites b-i-t-e-s and jesse's the the young girl who the stepfather had bought a dog about a year ago and she started making these treats and selling them. And it's just gotten so big. They, they finally purchased a, a bill, a rented a place and they're opening a store and they're selling this online. So it's Jesse's bites. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, well, <clears throat> in Richards, here's a deal. Um, this may be one of the most jam packed, full of information and great tips of any of the health and wealth podcast shows that we have ever had. So um, Nancy Addison, uh, thank you so much for being our, our guest today on our, on this casual red Friday, if you will, we really greatly appreciate it. So um, is there anything that you last minute want to say, and then we'll, we'll let everybody get going. Thank you. It's been an honor joining y'all today. And I just want to tell all your enrichers that you are, you are so divine and you make the world a better place and just realize that and, and te treat your body as if it is sacred, like a temple and you deserve it. That's uh, that is absolutely awesome. So for my co-host, Mr. Chemical Free Body himself, Tim James, I am Carter Wilcoxon, CEO and founder of CSI Financial Group and co-founder of Epic Services Company. Uh, make sure you go check that out. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can get all of the previous podcasts by going to our website at thehealthandwealthpodcastshow.com. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe again. We really appreciate the time. Until next time, have a great, wonderful, abundant weekend. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Health and Wealth Podcast Show. Hey, Enrichers. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Carter Wilcoxon. And I'm your host, Tim James. And by God, we are committed to helping you guys have fat wallets, flat bellies. So tune in again for another episode and make sure to like, share, and drink a lot of water. Or beer. You have just listened to the Health and Wealth Podcast with Carter and Tim.